good morning. You're catching me again. Uh, responding to someone like I was yesterday. Sometimes this thing spins and I never know when it's going to stop and say, you're on. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you. Good morning, everyone. Let's see if I can turn the volume up here. Maybe that'll help. It's Friday. It's the 20th of August and um, we're on our way to school meeting after this where when you homeschool through a charter school like we do uh, you have to meet with what's called a facilitator or it's just another word for their specific teacher that they are assigned to to give them their work every three weeks or so and that's what we do we go and we check in all our work and so this is our first meeting today and um, so before we leave which I appreciate your prayers because the meetings can be long and they require us to wear masks and I don't do masks for a long, long time. So, um, hi, good morning, Caitlin. Yes, yeah, so Friday and then tomorrow, Saturday, we will be in Judges 21, Lord willing. And that's the last chapter in the book of Judges. We'll be completing the book, I think, tomorrow. Um, after that, in this Passion Translation that we're going through is the book of Ruth. And Ruth is not that long, but I'm going to take a couple of days. I'll let you know when we're going to get started in that. <clears throat> I'll take a couple of days to look over that before we get started. And um, we'll be in Ruth sometime next week. All right, so today um, the title of this section is called Israel Civil War. It's on page 113 of the book if you're following along. Good morning, Gail. And um, let's get started reading here. I've entitled this myself, Battles Lost and Battles Won. We're going to see here that we do see some battles lost. And then ultimately the battle won. Yesterday, if you remember, there was a really sickening uh, chapter, <laughs> that's all I can say, uh, that ended with this Levite um, rising up and after his mistress was raped to death, her death was a result of rape, gang rape, or I don't know how else to put it. Um, he cut up her body into 12 pieces, I can't believe I'm saying it with my own mouth because I don't like this kind of stuff, <laughs> but um, and he delivered it to the 12 tribes of Israel because he um, he wanted to get the attention of the people. So that part I can get, that part I identify with, that part I can get behind is what I'm trying to say. He wanted to stir up the peoples to the wrongdoing that was going on. And that's what we need to be doing, is stirring up the people to all the wrongdoing that's going on. It's really demonic what's going on. And uh, we all know that. And um, like a spirit of Antichrist, pushing, pushing, pushing the envelope, hurting people, destroying people. Um, I was listening to someone this morning and he said, we do not serve a God <clears throat> that would require you to rape women, kill children, and be savage like what we're seeing going on here. So um, I, I, I think the Islamic people would say the same thing. I think they would realize that there's an injustice going on and that there's a obviously um, tyrannical, um, what's the word when you're governed by um, religious uh, leadership that's corrupt? I can't think of the word. Theocr theocrical. Is it theocrical? Is that a word? Theo Help me out here, Caitlin. <laughs> I'm making up words now. A theocracy, but when the people are being ruled by an unholy religious order. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, so here's here's my help, depotism. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's get started here. 
the Israelites were united as one man from Dan in the north to Beersheba to the south, in the south, including those living in Gilead on the other side of the Jordan. Theocracy. Yeah. Everyone assembled together before Yahweh at Mizpah, and all the leaders of all the people from the tribes of Israel presented themselves in the assembly of God's people. 400 thousand fighting men armed with swords. The Benjamites heard that the Israelites had assembled at Mizpah. The Israelites said to them, tell us how did this evil rape and murder happen? The Levite whose mistress had been murdered replied, my mistress and I stopped at Gibeah in the territory of Benjamin to spend the night. That night the depraved men of Gibeah came after me to harm me gathering around the house in the night where I was staying, and they intended to kill me, but instead they raped my concubine or mistress, and she died. This deliberate, outrageous act of depravity. I want to underline this. It's deliberate, it's outrageous, and it's an act of depravity was committed in Israel. Therefore, I took her body and cut it in pieces and sent the pieces throughout every part of Israel now you Israelites must decide on a response. Let's do something about it here and now. So this is the call to action, and it's an immediate call, which I keep feeling in my spirit too, an immediate call to action. Um, you have to decide on a response. Let's do something about it here and now. Okay, so that is, we have lots of ways we can respond, spiritually and um, meaning in prayer, fasting, calling out to God. You know, I heard this most precious story. There's a man named Billy Burke that I follow now, who's a uh, minister, pastor, who has had a profound healing ministry. I watch him a lot now, and um, he was talking about how when he was backslidden for a couple of years in his teenage years, his grandmother would take his picture and go up into her bedroom on the second floor of their home. She was staying with them or with the mother, and um, she would cry, uh, she would cry out, actually this is, actually I wonder if this is the same grandmother, no this is, his mother is the one that took him <coughs> to be healed when he was nine, but she would cry, cry, loud cries of his name before the father until um, he came back to Jesus, and I thought, wow, that intercession for that, from that woman, <coughs> yielded some fruit that's going on right until today with people getting healed left and right through his ministry. So we have to be able to respond and there has to be some tenacity in our response and some fervor. Ah. Yes, Pepper, you agree? <laughs> all right, attempt at extradition. Then all the people stood in unison and declared, that was good, at least they got into unison, unity. None of us will go back to our cities or return to our homes. This is what we're going to do to Gibeah. We'll cast lots to choose who will fight against it, and we'll take a tenth of the men of our tribes of Israel to fight, I mean, to carry supplies for our forces. When our army arrives at Gibeah in the territory of Benjamin, we'll give them what they deserve for the outrageous, disgraceful act they committed in Israel. So all the men of Israel united as one man to come against Gibeah. The Israelites, I'm sorry, the Israelite tribes sent couriers throughout the tribe of Benjamin saying, what is this brutal crime that you've done? We demand that you surrender the depraved perverts from Gibeah who took part in this evil act. We'll put them to death and purge the evil out of Israel. So it was pretty, I mean, cut and dry. They called the spade the spade, said, just give them, hand them over to us. We will purge them, purge them out of our um, he's out of Israel and purged this evil, but they wouldn't do it. But the Benjamin, Benjamites refused to yield to the demands of their brothers, the Israelites. Instead, the Benjamites gathered warriors from all their towns to come to Gibeah and fight their brothers, the Israelites. On that day, the Benjamites gathered a force from their towns of 26,000 armed men, not including the 700 elite soldiers of Gibeah. Among Benjamites' elite troops, 700 were left-handed, 
Each of them could sling a rock and hit a target within a hairbreadth without missing. The tribes of Israel had 400,000 experienced soldiers armed with swords, not counting Benjamites, warriors. The Israelites inquire of God at Bethel. So here's where they start to lean into Yahweh and ask him what should they do. Before the battle, the armies of Israel went to the house of God to seek counsel from God. The Israelites inquired, which tribe gets to go first to battle the Benjamites? Yahweh's answer, Judah will go first. You know, it just it's amazing that you can get strategy from God or you cannot get strategy from God. You can go to him, simply just go to him and ask him in prayer what to do. And you can receive understanding or we can go in our own flesh. We can just forget to take that one step and ask him what should we do. The Israelites got up the next morning and encamped near Gibeah. The men of Israel took up battle positions against the Benjamites at Gibeah. But the Benjamites rushed out of the city and slaughtered 22,000 Israelites. It's a lot of people that got killed in one day. The men of Israel encouraged one another and resumed their battle positions where they had lined up the first day. So they had to kind of regroup. And the regrouping after losing 22,000 men was to encourage one another should we stop there for a minute and think about this? How can we encourage one another? We're seeing battles, quote unquote, lost. We're seeing lives lost. We're seeing a depravity unleashed. How can we stop today, regroup, and encourage one another? We can do this. We can do this. Let's do this. That's what my student says before we start his lesson. Let's do this, Miss Laura. Oh God, give us that kind of heart. Give us the heart to encourage each other, to regroup and to say, God has got this. Not we've got this, but God has got this. We have to stop and remind ourselves of who he is again. <clears throat> They resumed their battle positions where they lined up the first day. They wept before Yahweh until evening. They inquired of him, Should we go out again to battle with our brothers, the Benjamites? And Yahweh answered, Yes, go back into the battle. Yes, go back into the battle. Dry your tears. Comfort your hearts. Yes, go back into the battle. The next day, the Israelites advanced toward the Benjamites. When, when Benjamin marched out from Gibeah to engage them, they struck down another 18,000 Israelite swordsmen. From 22 the first and 18 the next. What is that number? 40,000. The number 40 comes up again. After losing again, the entire Israelite army went up to the house of God and they sat there fasting and weeping. They couldn't eat, or they chose not to eat. And you know they had to be hungry. You know they had to be war-torn, thirsty. And they sat there fasting and weeping before Yahweh all day until evening and presented bird offerings and peace offerings before Yahweh. The Israelites inquired of Yahweh at Shiloh. Shiloh um, is where they had, they had the Ark of the Covenant actually there. This is the only mention of the Ark of the Covenant in the book of Judges. The Ark of God's Covenant was there in those days. And Phinehas, son of Eleazar, Eleazar, son of Aaron, ministered there before the Ark. And he inquired of Yahweh, saying, Should we resume our battle with our brothers, the Benjamites, or should we quit? Lord, tell us what to do. Do we go forward or do we stop? I've got friends. I was so surprised they were, you know, in this incredible medical battle here in our town, standing up for the rights of those who are employed by the medical system. Uh, and they are all of a sudden hearing from the Lord, moving, just like that. 
everything for sale, house for sale. I mean, boom, overnight. And I'm, they don't even know where they're going, but they know they have to leave here. And so that isn't for everyone, but everyone does need to know, what do we do, Lord? Do we stay? Do we go? Do we engage in battle? Do we rest? Um, we need to hear from you. That's the most important thing. We need to only do what you say to do. Yahweh answered them, attack. Wow, what an answer. For tomorrow I will give you the victory. And this is what we're used to hearing in the previous chapters of Judges, where God prophetically promises, I will give you the victory. Let's just encourage one another right now with those words, I will give you the victory. Let's say that out of our mouths. I will give you the victory. Let's say that a few times here, just as much as you can. Encourage, let's put our hands on our own hearts for courage encouraging our own inner man I will give you the victory 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 yes Lord yes Lord we receive that so the next section is called Victory. It's on page 115 if you're following along. So Israel set ambushes all around Gibeah. On the third day, one company of Israelites advanced against the Benjamites, deploying against Israel, I'm sorry, against Gibeah as they had before. And this tactic drew the Benjamites out of the city to attack the advancing Israelite army, leaving the city unguarded. They began to inflict casualties on the Israelites as before. There they killed about 30 men of Israel. The Benjamites boasted, We're defeating them just as we did before. I read this and I thought, The Benjamites boasted. Boasting in the Lord or boasting in themselves? Wearing garments of humility or wear, wearing garments of pride. It's our choice, isn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I see your comment. Our victory is in Christ and he's never lost a battle. Amen. Amen. All right, so then they boast their thinking that they're, they're in charge and that they're winning their victory again. But when the Benjamites had taken the bait, the Israelites said, retreat and draw them away from the city to the main roads. Every Israelite rose from his position, took their assumed positions at Baal Tamar. And then the Israelites, who were hiding in ambush, jumped up from their positions west of Gibeah. 10,000 elite soldiers from all over Israel made their direct assault on Gibeah. 10,000 soldiers, elite soldiers, made a direct assault on Gibeah. <clears throat> the fighting was fierce. That's the next thing I underlined. We will experience fierce battles, and the Benjamites had no clue that disaster was at their doorstep. On that day, Yahweh struck down the Benjamites before Israel. The Israelites slaughtered 25,100 swordsmen of Benjamin. Then the Benjamites realized that they were defeated. The Israelites had moved back because they were depending on the surprise attack they had set up near Gibeah. The men of Israel, who had been waiting in ambush, made a mad dash for Gibeah, attacking the city, and killed its inhabitants. Israelite strategy was to send up a smoke signal from the city once they had sacked it. And when the men of Israel saw the smoke signal, they would turn and rejoin the battle. When the Benjamites had inflicted about 30 casualties on the men of Israel, they said, look, we are defeating them as we did in the first battle. But when the smoke signal began to go up from the city, the Benjamites looked behind them and saw the whole city going up in smoke. 
when the men of Israel turned back, the men of Benjamin saw that, is, that disaster had come upon them, and they panicked. So they fled towards the wilderness, retreating from the Israelites, but the Israelites overtook them and killed them there. Surrounding the Benjamites, the Israelites chased them and easily overran them in the area east of Gibeah. So smoke signals and smoke kind of reminded me of all the smoke around here and the fires. And I do want to read to you out of Psalm 68, as I heard someone read that this morning. And um, <coughs> <coughs> it's, a di it's a poetic song of praise from David that we, we did go through this you know, when we studied the Psalms, but this is the Passion Translation. I just want to read a portion of it to you. God arise with awesome power, and every one of your enemies will scatter in fear. Chase them away, all these God-haters. Blow them away as a puff of smoke. Melt them away like wax on the fire. One good look at you and the wicked vanish. But let all the righteous be glad. Yes, let them all rejoice in your presence and be carried away with gladness. Let them laugh and be radiant with joy. Let them sing their celebration songs for the coming of the cloud rider whose name is Yah. To the fatherless, he is a father. To the widow, he is a champion friend. The lonely, he makes part of a family. And the prisoners, he leads into prosperity until they sing for joy. This is our holy God in his holy place. For the rebels, But for the rebels, there is heartache and despair. O oh Lord, it was you who marched in front of your people, leading them through the wasteland. Yeah, I just love this. I'll just stop there, but I... I love this part in verse 2 that says, blow them away as a puff of smoke. Just like we're reading here in Judges 20. The whole city was going up in smoke. That's what they thought. And so that caused them to run, and then they were beaten, over to overtaken. The last part of this says, the title of it is The Survivors. 18,000 Benjamites died, all of them valiant war fighters. As they turned and fled in the wilderness to Rimen Rock, the Israelites picked off another 5,000 Benjamites on the main roads. They chased them as far as Gid Gidim, killing 2,000 more there. That day, a total of 25,000 sword-bearing Benjamites fell. All of them were valiant fighters, but 600 men who had fled to the wilderness camped at Rimen Rock and remained there for four months. The men of Israel went back to the Benjamites and slaughtered every living thing in every town, men and beasts and all that were found, and they burned down every town they came across. Wow. Every living thing was taken. So I just wanted to say, you know, we need to always hear from the Lord. He is the one, as Caitlin was reminding us, that fights and wins our battles. And, um, yeah, we just need him, don't we? Just need him so much. We lean, lean, lean into the Lord today. God, there's nothing that we can do apart from you, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We praise you, Lord, for the ability to win the battle. The victory is ours in Jesus. And we receive your victory today. We receive your goodness. We receive your mercy and your kindness. And we surrender again afresh today to you. I surrender all of my plans, all the thoughts, every thought that's not from you, Lord, we, we give it back to you. We don't want to think things of ourselves or other people or situations that's really not your plan, your heart. So we give everything to you, Jesus. We surrender. We pray that you fill us afresh today with your Holy Spirit. Fill us anew. Come, Holy Spirit, and be. Be our King. Be our guide. Be our counselor. Be our provider. 
our protector. We love you, Lord. All right, have a great, great day, and Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Thanks for